Hi friends, host Eric here, host of Talking with Famous People, and Floyd and I ha are doing a little intuiting tonight. Um, there was a big problem. We weren't sure what it was. The problem. We weren't sure how big it was. We just knew there was some sort of big problem somewhere. And with that little data, we were set forth on the task of intuiting a solution. So I naturally initially went to ducks because I typically start with ducks. Um, can ducks solve the problem is my first question usually. And the answer is almost always no, which is why it's a good place to start because you can eliminate something right off the bat. Yeah, but I, I, I disagree with you straight off the bat because I think ducks are so versatile. They can like walk, you know, crawl, swim, dive, fly. They're like the Swiss Army knife of the of the natural world. So, well, like, which of those skills do you think is going to be useful in solving this as yet heretofore undefined problem? Well, that's the point. It's as yet heretofore undefined. So, therefore, the duck is just as useful as any other. Okay. Well, it seems to me that the first thing we need to do is to find a mechanism to define the big problem <laughs> that we're trying to solve. That's the first thing we need to intuit out. Okay, if the big problem is going to take up a lot of room, so mm -hmm. it's probably in a convention center somewhere. I'm thinking mm -hmm. convention centers. I'm thinking uh, wholesale shows selling mm -hmm. things like soap holders. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm thinking you don't just need one duck. You can have many, many ducks. You can have ducks crawling along the floor. You can have ducks midair. You can have ducks on the ceiling. You can have ducks which are... Uh, um, transporting this this place, this building. You can I, have ducks doing deliveries. I just What's intuited the problem? the problem. I intuited the problem right now. It came to me. The problem is you're having a hot tub show at a convention center, and they've imported a bunch of ducks in to put <laughs> in the hot tubs to make them seem more appealing to the people at the mm -hmm. hot tub show. But what they forgot to account for is the ducks, the ducks have defecated in all of the hot tubs. And mm -hmm. the people go to try out the hot tub and they come out and they're covered in duck feces. So that's the big problem. And we've got into it mm -hmm. the solution. We've got to save this show because nobody's going to buy a hot tub when covered in duck feces. What are we going to do? Yeah, but I think you've, uh, you've improperly defined the problem because what you failed to realize was that the hot tubs weren't for people. The hot tubs were for duck owners who are looking for hot tubs for their ducks. So there is no problem in the first instance. The hot tubs, they're called. <laughs> they're hot tubs just for ducks? Oh, but so, okay. Well, they, we've intuited the solution. The solution is there's no inherency to that problem. Don't worry. Mm. The people who climbed in the hot tubs were just testing them out on behalf of their ducks. They expected to get duck feces on them. It's a natural part of being a duck owner. Mm -hmm. and, or... That's right, go on, go on. And it's quite possible that all the ducks in attendance were not brought there by the convention center owners, but instead were brought by the owners themselves of the ducks to place in the hot tubs to see how they liked it. That's true, but you've you've not factored in how there may have been some non-owners who were just simply mentally ill who found themselves at a hot duck tub convention. It might, it might not have been mentally ill. Maybe they just they just thought it was a regular hot tub convention. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we solved this little non-dilemma, or what? We did solve the problem. We solved the problem of the duck feces in the hot tubs at the convention center because we intuitively, we correctly intuited, based on all the clues in front of us, that it was a duck hot tub convention party thing. Mm -hmm. And so it was appropriate there'd be duck feces in them. The fact that some of the people got duck feces on them, probably most of those people we intuited correctly again were the owners mm -hmm. of the ducks. However, we also intuited correctly again that some of the people who were not owners of ducks, but I think I finally intuited the last bit correctly that those people simply were mistaken. They thought they were just very small hot tubs, uh, but for regular humans, they didn't realize mm -hmm. they were just for ducks. They w either willfully or some other way ignored the big signs that say ducks only in these hot tubs. And I think the reason they ignored the sign was uh, the D got dislodged and somebody thought they'd get a spray can and put an F there instead. 
So mm. people were starting cons to construe it to be some form of like, you know, porn show, sexual, definitely for humans, etc. But it was actually just simply for ducks. Mm. That's one thing. And the other thing is, what would a duck hot tub look like? And how would it be any different from a human one? It looks like a bucket, basically. <laughs> But it's deeper than a bucket, a little bit deeper, because the duck might want to go under underneath a bit, you know. And uh, the duck just sits there on cold winter nights <laughs> and enjoys <laughs> enjoys <laughs> its bubbling bucket of hot tub water. Now the thing is, you can get the one with the optional bread dispenser. It pops out little pieces of old crusty stale <laughs> bread, and the duck will eat it. <laughs> So if I got this right, um, we've got a contemplative, possibly NIF, uh, sorry, a contemplative, possibly INFP, nature's well duck, who's that's what it's called. That's what the brand is called. Nature's well duck hot tubs. Nature's well brand hot duck hot tubs. Duck and we've got a vending hot machine. Tubs. We've got a vending machine for bread. Um, <laughs> It's got one of the ones with the little seeds in it, too. You put a quarter in, you go like this, you get a handful of them. It's right there. But the duck has to learn to operate it himself. That's what makes it a challenge. <laughs> and so what would the duck use? For, uh, He's got to go earn quarters. He has to go out and earn quarters first, doing duck tricks in the street. It's really a way to try to make ducks more an important part of our economy. It's their growth-promoting activity. <laughs> I'm just like thinking, where, where, where is the duck gonna collect the quarters and transport the quarters? And... Hey, you tie a little sign around his neck. We'll quack for quarters. <laughs> we'll quack for. <laughs> and he just you... sets it loose in a crowd. It goes up to somebody and quacks at him, and they're like, oh, "I guess I got to give it a quarter now." And you put a little, uh, a little um, bucket on, strapped on top of his head, put the quarters in. You see, because where my mind had gone was into, you know how you get like uh, fingerprint recognition iPads and stuff like that? I wondered if there was like a beak recognition vending machine where the duck just simply has to stick its beak in like into like an accepting thing. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about ret a retired duck, aren't we? Well, so you, you, don't want, you don't want ducks that aren't supposed to be in the gated duck community, right? <laughs> you, you don't want them accessing the services. No, no. You got to keep out the riffraff. That's why you got to have the duck bill, ID pad thing that you're talking about. That's just one layer of security. That's. <laughs> they also have to. They also have to enter a code they get on their phone. Really? Yeah. Because what I was thinking of is, you know, if you imagine the wing, maybe there's like an inner code which is stored on the inside of the wing, which they present to make it easier for them to remember. Right? Because that way they don't have to memorize it. Because ducks don't have that great of a memory. You think? It, well, yeah. It, see, that this is the thing. They're non-optimized. With duck hot tub technology, we're going to optimize the whole species. They're going to be much more useful. They're going to be much smarter. They're going to quack various varying degrees of pitches so they can sing and quacks. See, it, where when, oh, sorry, go on. You, can, <coughs> you can make that one of the, the key things as well. They have to sing a set of tones like Third, Close Encounters is the third kind song. Well, it's interesting you went into like the space connection because I was thinking of uh, an NI duck, which is like it has a constellation on the inside of its wing, and it goes like that, and it collects the stars together, the any various different bits and bobs, and brings them together for the vending machine, possibly with a tune that plays on the vending machine when it's hit the right code, which elicits bread and also other nutritious treats for nature's well bucket for the long nights when you're contemplating whether to give a duck or not. Well, yeah, I think the one with the dispenser should have, it's not just a perfect circle. It's got a little kind of stick out part that, that, that drops the bread into. So, 
the duck can still sit perfectly fine because you don't want it to have to like reach down in to peck it. You know, cause you should be able to comfortably peck like that. Mm-hmm. Or to have a little fence there to keep the bread in the little area. I see. So there'll be like a little, like shallower area for and the... like a little, maybe a little footstool, like it was a burger bar for a duck in uh, nature as well. I like the footstool idea. That Why should they have to... I don't know if they have to dog paddle or not. They might just actually float on top of the water. Yeah, I think they probably <laughs> I think they do float on top of the water, yeah. I don't think what they have I'm to wondering, dog paddle. Yeah, but what I'm wondering about is, right, this seems quite isolatory, which fits with an INFP duck. But if there wants to be, you know, if there's needed to be interconnections with other other ducks, in the nature's well thing, are there, like, tunnel uh, networks? There, there are now. Okay. There should be. There for sure should be. There's not only tunnels, but there's bridges that go up and over as well. The, the water mm-hmm. comes from the top of it, so it streams down both ways, you know, and they've got to swim upstream and then downstream to the other side. And the, they'll <laughs> go to, there's a whole ring of buckets, but every duck is in their own bucket. There's not room in a single bucket or a single ducat tub. There's not room in a single ducat tub uh, for more than one duck, okay? But in the very middle, there's a breeding hot tub, which is two buckets worth of bucket. So you can fit in two ducks in there. And that'll prevent rape, too. You know, ducks are very rapey. If they can only fit two in the breeding <laughs> hot tub, that'll prevent gang rape from ducks. I see. Okay. And um, what I'm wondering is, do you think all the various different other types of duck like surely the MBTI applies to the duck world. We've sort of like identified INFP retirement village duck tub, but what about sort of like for ENTPs and all the others? Mm. Well, the ENTP duck, um, he's he's a little frustrated because there's not really a lot to work with around him. He's got a lot of SE concerns. He's got a lot of SI concerns. He's wet. He's feeling kind of cold. Um, there's okay. There's some grass. There's some fish. There's some bugs. So mm-hmm. what? What am I doing here? Why am I here? And what do I value more, eating or swimming over there? I don't know. I'm poorly designed to be a duck. Says the ENTP <laughs> duck. See, what's coming to me is that this ENTP duck remembers the good old days when it used to waddle along the halls of Cambridge and Oxford and uh, used to read philosophy. It remembers a previous life? No, no, no. It's it's retired, isn't it, now? We're talking about retirement village ENTP duck, and it's remembering how it used to be. But now, instead of, like, having the fruits of, like, TI and... uh, being studied and all of that sort of stuff it's it's met with se and grass and like water and like what does it do with itself i think that's 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 the dilemma it's facing what does it do with itself hmm. that's the same dilemma human entities are facing in general i think yeah. human everybody's are facing that dilemma what to do with oneself although probably fi users aren't thinking that they're probably thinking i know what to do with myself Really? And what's that? Whatever I want. Whatever I want. Mm. Mm. Presumably they know what they want, right? You would hope so. I'm just wondering whether an ENTJ duck would build a duck water world complex for the more adventurous SE ducks. That's what's, what's... Oh, it's coming to me. Well, what's in it for him, though? You see, the thing is, how do ducks profit? What are they looking for that is value to them? They're looking for mates, and they're looking for, like, little fishes? What else do ducks want? A good nesting spot? So the ENTJ duck would have to have established which is the best nesting spot, and how he can attain the best nesting spot using systems knowledge. Mm. He wants to... Whereas... So gone. Which is probably near where the most little fishes are. I'm just 
throwing that out there. Best nesting spot and proximity to little fishes are probably a high correlation. You see, where mine, what mine went to was they're actually looking for a place to deep dive and connect with that FI, which is represented by the deep diving. So I think they're looking for a spot of water which they can really go deep, deep into. I think that's what an ENTJ duck is actually secretly looking for. So in the complex, which they formed for SE ducks, I think there's a basement level where they can really go deep, deep down if they wish to. What deep, do you think? Deep down. Deep down into the lake, into the mud. Mm. That's where the ENTJ duck likes to wallow. And no mm. little no little fishes down there. Only the darkness of their own souls. And they mm, exactly. and they they surface and began authoritatively denying other ducks their rights. You go get <laughs> me little fishes. And you go bring me mates. You build my nest. I'm standing over here and telling you how to do it, motherfuckers. <laughs> Are we gonna rope ESTJ ducks into this as well? ESTJ is like, I'm your right hand man, tell me what to do first. You think? Do you think there'd be a clash between an ESTJ duck and an ENTJ duck? I don't think so. I think ESTJ duck would concede defeat to ENTJ duck. Why? Well, because knowing how to do things means knowing who's in charge. Mm, so and falling into line. The thing is, ESTJ might make a bid to be in charge, but provided he failed that bid, which he probably would against the ENTJ, then he'd fall in line. So do you think there'd be any worker ducks, or do you think some other part of the animal kingdom would be used? Well, the ENTJ probably beat out the ESTJ because the ENTJ's plan was to enslave the, uh, the what are those things called? Peahens. Okay. The, the the ENTJ's plan was to enslave the peahens, mm. um, not the peacocks, because they put they their two feathers were too bright and they annoyed the eyes of the ENTJ duck, but just mm. the peahens and uh, and then the ESTJ said, well, his plan was to enslave part of the duck population. So naturally, the ENTJ's plan got more support from everybody and. Ultimately, after mm. a brief power struggle, the whole thing collapsed to the side of the NTJ, and they went and enslaved the peahens, uh, mm. eventually having delicious peacock for dinner every night. I see. Whereas my mind was going to Star Wars territory and uh, a galaxy far, far away and a Death Star that has ducks. Um, Duck Death and Star. Storm yeah, and stormtroopers who are duck shaped uh and luke is also a duck there's also a duck of some sort and princess leia is a duck with the you know with the buns right. um i don't know how that weaves into this but perhaps there's like uh i don't know entertainment in the complex which is you know star wars duck territory well i i think the entj duck at the lake who enslaves the peahens, his identical twin brother who separated at birth <laughs> was launched into space by NASA as part of an experiment where he mutated from the radiation and mm -hmm. went off. He mutated, became super smart, and using just the tech that was already on board, modified the rocket so that it was near light speed. And then he mm -hmm. traveled to a, a distant place where he was able to meet some aliens who had some tech and he took some of that tech and he built this Death Star. He's on his way back mm. with Death Star very slowly though. He's got he's managed to cryogenically preserve his, his self such that his life extension is massive at this point. He's put mm. all this shit together. Um he's coming back to blow up the earth with the Death Star. But it won't, it's gonna be several thousand years before he gets back to Earth because uh even at the speeds he's been able to attain, but the Death Star he can't move it quite that fast and mm -hmm. he's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of light years away and so even though he's you know he's really got good tech but not magic tech you know yeah i get it but i'm wondering the uh, like where does the duck bill platypus yoda fit in this story and also 
where my mind has gone is into a yin and yang symbol. So the guy that flew off many, many eons ago off into space and the ENTJ that's left, is it actually a female ENTJ? That's what I'm wondering. His long lost sister. Exactly. Masquerading as a boy of... duck. She's costumed yeah. as a boy duck because out in the galaxy, uh, space ducks, which she found there, um, are misogynistic. <laughs> and the duck bill of Yoda. Oh, the platypi, right. Well, platypi, they are a mystical sort of archetype in duck mythologies in general. Mm -hmm. They're considered... Uh, ducks actually have never met... No duck has ever met a duck bill platypus. They're just... Because they keep missing each other. They keep arriving at different times and... You know, it's just a coincidence, but they've no none of them have ever met. So as far as ducks are concerned, they're they're not sure if they're real or a myth. They've seen pictures, but they assume they were photoshopped. Mm. There's there's some ancient cave drawings with the the duck bill, and yeah. it's like yeah. the they're like um, oh, what is this? Where is this from? Etc. Maybe that's the ultimate quest that the ducks and the ENTJ and the INFP duck are actually questing after. To meet their makers, the duck bill platypuses. But, see, here's the thing. It's only been within the last 20 or 30 years that ducks could even get away with referring to duck bill platypi as having duck bills. Because the movement, the, the, the dogma says, only we ducks have bills of ducks. That's the way it's said in the, in the religious mm -hmm. text. And um, obviously, if you're a heretic, then you get quacked at very loudly. <laughs> you know the duck that was trying to earn money like um i quack for i quack for dimes or whatever it I was. quack for quarters right yeah i quack for quarters do you think he was originally in a uh in a monastery well i think before he embraced his se ways what you what we call retirement he actually calls exile he was part of oh. first the one intj brother um that went into space but mm -hmm. he got kicked out and sent in a capsule at super fast speed. He came back to the ENTJ who was in the lake and he got kicked out by him too. Mm -hmm. So that's why. <laughs> I see. And uh, for some reason I've got Raiders of the Lost Ark in my, in my head. Do you think there was a gold duckbill platypus skull? I know um, it. I know it. I don't think it. I know it. Okay, people you know say, it. people say, Eric, you can't know that you just believe it. But I know in my heart that it's there. It's out there somewhere in Guatemala where they say it is somewhere in about a, there's about a thousand square miles of jungle somewhere in that thousand square miles. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. mystical duck mythological artifact exists. And what's coming to me is the retirement complex for the ducks is perfectly aligned that every million years when looking up at the sky, the constellations of stars all configure to form a duck bill platypus in the sky. The tail of which points to that skull you're talking about. Exactly. That's the one. Well, I think we solved the rest of Earth's problems. I think so too. So good job, Opaloid. Uh, ducks will thank us. Duck bill platypi will thank us. People will thank us. And... So will bugs. The yes. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the YouTube audience too. All right, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.